Good afternoon. My name is Yuki Ikuta, and I'm fortunate this afternoon to be talking with Mark Kabrick. Mark is one of our senior process specialists out of our Northern California office. Good afternoon, Mark. Hi, Yuki. It's good to see you. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Really appreciate your time today. Um, one of the things I wanted to do was talk to you about CIP definitions and design basics. I know that we can divide that into a couple of different parts, but why don't we start with what exactly is CIP? Okay, so so CIP really what what it what it is is it's the it's a removal of gross visible and invisible uh, soils from your system, whether it's piping or um, or, or includes vessels, and, but it does this through the uh, through you know clean and place practices, which is exactly what CIP stands for. Gotcha. Well, and when you say we're, we're removing gross uh, soils and whatnot, can you dive into that a little bit? So the soils can, they, they can be comprised of whatever your product is. Let's just say that you're a food and beverage company. Maybe you're making something, say like mayonnaise. Mayonnaise would be, definitely have some leftover materials. Or maybe you're in a bio farm. Maybe you have a, um, you know, some leftover product that you certainly want to clean out so that you can follow up with the sterilization. Or it could be biofilms. Biofilms are really prevalent in uh, a lot of systems and it's, they're prevalent everywhere if they're not maintained unless you are you're taking extreme measures say that as in as in a uh, say a sterile system well and i guess uh, dive into a little bit for me what you mean by biofilms what are biofilms so biofilms are they're they're really interesting um and, and from you know a study perspective, so it, basically everything has uh, bacteria floating around, and when it's floating around and it's it's moving, it's called planktonic. And this planktonic uh, bacterium, um, as it's moving through these different pipes and different, you know, because it, it is everywhere, when it sees a surface that it's able to attach to, it it excretes this EPS material, and this EPS material allows that bacterium to latch onto a surface. Pretty much any surface, and then at that point it becomes sessile is the term, and you know so that from that sessile bacteria, there's other bacteria that are going to become sessile, planktonic to sessile, and then of course bacteria, you know, through binary fission, they re they replicate really quickly, um, depending on the bacterium, some more than others. So, so that's how the biofilm gets started, and as this biofilm starts to to build. Uh, in population, it also can build in complexity of uh, of types of bacterium. So as it, it starts to build a 3D aggregate where it's actually, um, you know, multiple layers thick of different bacterium, and you might have obligate aerobes, and obligate anaerobes, um, and then they can live within this within this matrix, this 3D aggregate. And, you know, the ones that are possibly an anaerobe, they can do quorum sensing, it's how they talk. They'll say, hey, send me some nutrients and they'll create channels and they'll send them down through uh, these nutrients to the, you know, anaerobes that can be exposed to, to uh, you know, oxygen. Um, so that's, that's how it starts. And then, uh, of course, as this aggregate grows, it reaches a point to where some of the, uh, some of the, bacterium are ejected back into planktonic again and then that planktonic freshly planktonic is able to go somewhere else within your system and then repopulate or what they call colonize and that's that's really what a, um, a biofilm is and it's the same as that um, slippery stuff that you'll see like if you ever clean your drain traps out at home uh, that's a biofilm absolutely so whether it's uh, leftovers from your uh, process, your actual process, or these biofilms, um, a lot of things to take into consideration. So what are some uh, basics of a CIP design that you would start with? So uh, a lot of CIP design, of course, you know, you know, you're trying to remove these these things that we just talked about, the soils and the biofilms. Uh, one of the th one of the methods is to make sure that you're designing multiple CIP pathways so that each pathway gets covered, each open valve, you know, each valve that you might have in a system gets open and you're cleaning across the open valve seat. Um, you, you know, one of the things that, one of the big detriments to a CIP system is excessive size dead legs. Uh, dead legs, you know, like say a T, maybe you have a T with an instrument in. Um, you want to make sure that that T is just minimal as minimized as much as absolutely possible because that's where sediment and 
you know, will start to accumulate and it's really hard to get rid of it. And then another is velocity. You know, velocity mm -hmm. of your of your CIP cleaning fluids is really important so that you create shear forces sufficient to um, rip rip this the soils and the biofilms loose from your surfaces. Um, and yeah, so that's typically um, what we would do is we would focus highly on on a Reynolds number, make sure that we're looking for what is called turbulent flow. Well, and I think one of the things to um, understand as well. So when you say dead leg, how do you define and how do you measure a dead leg in a system? How do you know if you have a dead leg? So, um, you know, if you were looking the BPE manual, ASME BPE, they would define a dead leg um, as any, you know, say, if, for instance, you have a T and fluids moving past it, and that's that's called a run side. The branch side of the T where it's blocked, whether it may be by a valve or an instrument, that distance that you see going extending from the run side of the piping to wherever that instrument or valve is blocking it is considered the dead leg. Um, so the BPE manual, if you were to look at it, would say that anything two times the pipe diameter is acceptable. Um, and, and certainly that, that meets the criteria if you're doing steam in place. And um, But our recommendation is that you try and minimize that even more because if you were looking at, say, a six inch line or a two inch pipe rather, um, that's still four inches. Uh, of dead leg that would be acceptable according to the BPE. And, you know, you can get instrument tees, short side outlet, uh, ferrule tees for instruments and valves that you can get that dead leg much, much closer. And that's, you know, we have some supporting data and videos that we could actually share that that would show you why those dead legs need to be kept just to an absolute minimum. Makes sense to me. Yeah. Um, you know, so of course the velocity that's that's extremely important as well. You want to make sure that you have a turbulent flow. Um, yeah. um, so a little bit on the turbulent flow. So the Reynolds number, you you probably hear people talk about it. The Reynolds number is really a dimensionless number, and what it is is it's the it's the ratio of inertial forces to viscous forces, and that's how it's used to determine turbulent flow. Um, the the general rule of thumb is anything over 4,000, a number of 4,000 Reynolds, is turbulent flow. Anything 2,000 and under is laminar flow. So laminar, if you think of, uh, if you could think of a, a nice steady flow going through a pipeline, um, not and not uh, not being uh, molested in any way to where it's just it's always going in a nice laminar flow, kind of like you'd think it was a, a downflow laminar hood. Um, it's it's not disruptive. Unfortunately, that doesn't create a lot of shear forces to clean. So what you want is that turbulent flow rate um, where it starts to create eddies within the piping in the fluid, eddies and currents, and that starts to um, attack the sidewalls or the piping. Or, and that's what gets aggressive and, and, sh and cleans, scrubs the piping clean, so to speak. No, and uh, consideration of dead legs, Laminar flow, Reynolds number um, is a good first step. So um, I have some more questions about CIP and the next steps that you would uh, take and look at if you don't mind. Absolutely. 